My pineal gland experience wasn't pleasant. It was really a nightmare, honestly. I'm not trying to say anything bad or good about it. I'm just explaining to you my experience. Other people have had great positive experiences. I hope everybody does. I don't want it nothing bad on anybody my experience was like this i'm watching this horror movie or this real life horror movie people being killed right and then i'm looking away like i can't see this and then somebody taking my head go brandon this is the fucking truth you're gonna watch this you're gonna understand that you are god that's it you can move shit with your mind there's nothing you can do about it don't look away you can't look away i won't let you that's exactly how i felt for three weeks straight couldn't sleep couldn't eat couldn't think of anything else couldn't get away from it the moment i started to pray it took me three weeks Okay, because remember I used to believe that I was God, so who am I going to pray to myself? I can't pray to myself, I'm, I, that's an oxymoron. The moment I started to pray to God, please somebody help me, God, anybody, please just take this away from me, I don't want to know it, I don't want to know it anymore, I can't, I can't, it's going to kill me, it's going to, I'm going to hurt somebody else, I don't want it, I don't want to know this shit. I felt like I was like a child and I just learned about, you know, sex, like, you know, like, you know, babies come from the, the stalk, the stalk who brings it from the clouds and he takes the babies in his mouth and delivers them to the mommy and daddy and then you find out oh no you really have to do all this you know dirty stuff and you're like a child like what fuck this is real be like wow this is real i know it is because i feel it i know and you're like this is fucked up <laughs> and your whole world gets turned upside down and it's a huge fucking burden it was the most scared i've ever been most lonely, most scared, because it hit me at a soul level, a spiritual level. It, I felt more scared, felt more scared then, than I would now on a plane knowing I'm going to die, no one's going to crash. You know, you think about that. You think about how, how vulnerable you feel. Everything goes to your mind. That's exactly how I felt then, for three weeks straight by myself, didn't tell anybody. That whole experience made me realize is it made me very sensitive to other people's feelings and emotions and um, consciously aware. My empathy grew really big. I understood the whole concept of Jesus dying for people's sins or forgiving those who killed him. That whole empathy, sympathy, compassion. That experience was like the devil, some freaking demon holding my head and saying, look, this is it. This is the truth. You wanted to know, here it is. I'm not gonna let you go. Why should I escape it? It was it would took over. When your mind automatically goes, you can't get the song out of your head you've been listening to for all day. It's the same thing. It was so freaking scary. And then I started to pray. I'm like, please God, please somebody help me. I, I just don't want this. Then it was gone. A few days it took. And I'm thinking about that now. I'm like, wow. When you pray from here, your intentions are pure. They they get answered, in my opinion. But I don't wish that experience on my worst enemy. Us as people, like, I'm trying to tell you the story. I can't make you see this story. You can hear what I'm saying, and you're kind of like, yeah, I guess. You know, he sounds like he's, he's telling the truth. I mean, I'll take a lie detector test. I mean, this is just my experience of what happened. I got no reason to lie about it. I sound freaking nuts. But I'm telling you what happened to me. Now, that's the truth. Whether you accept it or not, that doesn't really matter. But that's what happened. Me trying to convince you is something totally different. <laughs> it's just something I can't do. When I was 22 years old, like I said earlier, I read this book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And what happened was I began to think and believe that I was God. And I'm not just saying, oh yeah, I'm God, you know, like a lot of people do today. No. Yeah, um, the secret, what do bleep do we know? All the things that they talk about in that book and movie, I discovered without reading either either books or watching those movies now it's not just the book the seven habits i had done some other courses advanced learning techniques psychology of selling and just used my own intuition but everything they talked about seven and the secret and what the bleep do we know i learned exactly what they were teaching before they came out i didn't have anybody teach me nothing now if you listen to my other video i say you remember about 20 percent of what you hear 30 percent of what you see 40 percent of what you say and 50 percent of what you do and 90 percent of what you see say hear and do that's what i did so i didn't have youtube videos like we have today we're all spoiled all, we, all the shit we got on this internet all the stuff i'm telling you i didn't have anybody tell me i didn't even know what youtube wasn't around back in 2002 2003 i wasn't watching any of these videos 
was barely any any information out on this stuff and even so I wasn't even looking into it so all the stuff that I learned about I did on my own internally I didn't know anything about conspiracy I didn't even get into conspiracies until 2006 9-11 the fifth anniversary that's another story I read these principles and and they just was like I was like oh my god this is so incredible I can't believe that I never knew about this I'm like who knows about this reality all the stuff that we know uh, the nature of the universe blah 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 a fool uttereth all his mouth but a wise man keepeth it until afterwards well that's exactly what I was doing then I wasn't telling anybody what I was experiencing was I would see things before they happened it was like deja vu on steroids 24 7 seven days a week for about three weeks straight i couldn't sleep my mind just kept going i would feel things in my chest something would tell me something's gonna happen here like i've been explaining your heart knows my heart would say oh my god the lights are gonna flicker and then the lights would flicker i'd walk into a room and oh man the tv's gonna it scared the shit out of me i didn't like this feeling at all i didn't like feeling things having the sixth sense when I was 22 it totally flipped my world upside down it caught me off guard I wasn't ready for it I was 22 didn't know shit I just broke up with with a girlfriend I was just you know reading books trying to get better and then boom I get I get hit with this freaking Cadillac <laughs> and I started to really honestly believe I swear I didn't want to believe I wasn't being egotistical I started to say oh my god what if what if I'm the second coming of Jesus I'm like oh my god and I would like get these panic attacks and then the more I panicked the more I started to feel <laughs> shit happening before it happened I'd be like oh my god um, oh someone's calling me bring the phone will ring and then you know I try I'd walk into another room to get away from it and then all of a sudden the lights would flicker I could not escape it this shit was just taking over it was manifesting it was like was on auto autopilot I, I would I never take baths I used to go in a bath I would take baths and then I'd be like all right just just calm down I wasn't taking any drugs either swear to God no drugs I wasn't even smoking pot nothing sit in a bathtub okay that feels good then my chest would be like oh my god the, the pipes are gonna rattle and then the pipes would rattle and I'd be like oh fuck and I'd walk outside, go for a nice little walk. Oh no, you know, don't you know that anything you put your mind to, Brandon, it seems to be happening. So if you start thinking about it, you're going to fly up in the, in the air, then you're going to start floating up. And then I, and I didn't want to tell anybody at the time. I, I didn't tell anybody. I was afraid to. I didn't do anything telekinetic. Where I got to was uh, turning lights off. And I, I got to feeling what people were going to say before it happened. I remember I was watching, it's like in October 2003. I was watching TV. I've been to Las Vegas before. I was 22. I'm like, oh, I remember I went to Las Vegas. I'm watching this. All of a sudden, History Channel, Las Vegas. And it pops in my head. Oh, my God, the MGM Grand, the White Tigers. Oh, shit. Uh, one of those dudes is getting mauled by a tiger. I, I felt it. I was like, oh, my God, as if I was there watching in the fucking audience turn off the tv i'm like all right forget that uh you know what else can i distract myself with i'm like do 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 no i can't hear you i'm not you know i'm not crazy i'm not turning shit off with my mind that's not that's impossible <laughs> the next day my mother was listening to the news and then i hear the news reporter say oh last night uh the famous siegfried and roy got mauled by the tiger i'm like oh i'm like um, I don't know if I caused that because I thought of it and, and then I started thinking like oh my god I'm causing people to get hurt by it, just thinking of it and so yeah I had a fucking crazy pineal gland experience it was like a trip if you take acid you ever have uh, taken acid before I mean I think maybe I've done it once but if you take acid or do shrooms and you're like um when is this shit gonna end that's what it was like for me but for three weeks straight and I didn't take any fucking drugs what do you think about that? I just couldn't handle it anymore. I started to pray. Please, somebody, if you're out there, some Buddhist monk uh, listening to my thought waves, can you please send down some healing waves of energy? And then within a few days, it subsided, actually. I started to pray. I'm like, I don't want this anymore. This is too much for me to handle. I don't want it. Take it back, please. I, it's too much of a burden for me. I'm not ready for this shit. Everything that I knew or thought I knew, no, that's wrong. You've been told wrong. Nobody knows, Brandon. Nobody really... Everyone thinks they know, but they don't know. That's what it was telling me. They don't know. They just know what they've been told. They don't really know. It just kept coming to me. Everything in the secret, everything in the bleep that we know about quantum physics, string theory, all that shit. Peak of my experience is 
I started to think about uh, black holes. I started thinking about black holes, and I'm like thinking, well, what if a black hole was made just by somebody thinking it, and then all of a sudden they just thought their galaxy into a fucking black hole, and everyone died and disappeared. And I started thinking about this when I was at a family christening up in Boston back 2003. It was October, and me and my mother and I just drove there and went to a hotel. I remember I was hanging out with my uncle. He's Uncle Al, he's a cool dude, smokes, you know, smokes the weed. But we sat down, we were chilling at the uh, hotel room. I sit down, I put my bags down. I remember, and I look at the phone on the on the phone, you know when you're in, in the hotel room, they got those red LED lights that just are always on, so in case you have the lights off, you can see where the phone is, it's there for like an emergency. I looked at the phone light, and I'm like, that red light, I'm like, oh my god, that shit, and I said to myself, I felt it here, my chest, that shit's gonna turn off, and it turned off, and I'm like, oh god, here we go. I look at the corner of my eye, it turns on, I look at it, it turns off, and this happened throughout the whole weekend. It only turned off when I looked at it, that night, I sleeping and I opened my eyes for a second I saw it lit and I knew it was lit I felt it and then I opened up and the thing turned off every time I looked at it so then I walk over to the TV I'm like what's on TV do 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 oh total recalls on the next channel dude and then I'm like oh total recalls on oh that's funny how I just knew that and then I saw the, the two chicks fighting in total recall like wah wah and I'm like all right let me fucking go outside for a walk because I don't know where else to go I'm about to go insane I go outside, I look across the street, and there's a corporate logo sign. Uh, e equals MC squared. And I'm like, son of a bitch, I was just thinking about black holes and atomic bombs. That's funny. Did I just manifest E equals MC squared corporation across the street? Or is <laughs> I mean, that's how bad it got. I'm serious, this isn't a joke. This really happened, I'm telling you exactly what happened. I was scared shit. So then, I go to my cousin's house, which is down a block from the hotel. We go partying with the family, everyone's there. And uh, everyone's in the house, there's like 25 people, and I hear everybody, and I'm like, I was so focused on the moment, the present now. I could hear everybody's conversation going on at the same time, and I knew what everyone was going to say to each other. So I'm like, you know how like we think we're usually in the past, or we're in the future, and we're never in the moment now? At this height, this time, I was always in the present, boom, now. I'm like, all right, that's crazy. Let's go outside, see what's going on outside. I go outside, you know, where the boys are hanging out, smoking their cigars and having their beers, and, you know, Uncle James, my great uncle, go out there. He starts talking about, as soon as I walk out there, he goes, hey, guys, did I ever tell you about my younger brother, Billy, when I moved into my house up in, up in Maine? He, he bought a house in Maine. Lives down the block from Stephen King, okay? Well, my other uncle, Billy, went into the house, you know, it was his older brother's house, checking it out. He's walking around in the rooms, and he goes to this one room, and he goes into the closet, puts his hand in the closet, and he swears his fucking arm comes out, it's frozen stiff like ice. He runs out of there, pale white. And my cousin, my Uncle James, is telling this story. He's like, ah, he came out of there, his hand, he, his face was pale white, he said that his arm was frozen stiff, and he's like, kids, don't go in that room, it's haunted. As soon as I come out here, he has to tell that story, like a supernatural story. Nobody in my family talks about that shit. So I'm like, oh great, you know, it's because I'm here, I'm influencing all this shit. I used, I, I used to smoke cigarettes too. I, w I would have a cigarette. I remember watching my cigarette one time during this whole period. I'm watching my cigarette and I'm watching one of the ashes fall from the cigarette. It starts to vortex up swear to god never happened before you know i used to smoke with the window open this happened with the window open i'm smoking in my room during a time i had my awakening my crazy experience the ash was flying it just flew and it, and it just went like this every almost every little ash started to do that it started to vortex up in a tornado it had something to do with the energy that I was giving off. I, that had to do with, uh, getting back to the story with my uncle, uh, I get out of that conversation because that's freaking me out even more. I walk into the street and I start feeling myself shaking like this. I, I felt like I was going to kill everybody. I, I swear to God, I felt like I was going to implode, like but I was going to blow up the whole fucking planet. My mother comes out, remember? She says, Brian, are you okay? I don't, I don't know. And then she had a beer and I just chugged the beer and that settled me down. Thank God for that fucking beer. 